without a shadow, right? If you ever in any place, there's not enough car parking spaces when you're bitch. Now, these people come in to do a 10K, but they, they want to park four metres away from the front door. <laughs> Baffles me. But, so all these things, it was, it, I quickly found out that they're all the same in what they do, right? I then went to LA Fitness. What I learned here was really important. It was don't listen to managers, right? Managers would turn up and they would tell me that everything was amazing and everything's brilliant in our site. I'd then go and speak to the staff and I'd quickly go, Jesus Christ, there's major problems here. So speaking to the staff and customers, I'm going to find out what's going on. Speaking to managers, I'm going to get this rose-coloured view of how good they are at managing their centre. So it quickly taught me to not really listen to managers, uh, but to make sure we get into the detail. I then became a commercial analyst looking after about 125 councils and trusts throughout the UK, looking at their data. So I went to work for a company where we got stuck right in. So I worked with the likes of Legends, Gladstone, XN, Omnico, Clubrite, all them type of companies to go, right, what's going in and what, what can we do with it? And, and again, what that taught me is that a lot of organisations don't actually know what they should be looking at. Whatever they came into the industry for, maybe because they love PT or because they love classes or whatever, they love doing that, they don't love doing all the other bits. So that taught me that. And now I work for me, which I'll be honest is much better. The Monday morning meeting spot on because I just have a coffee. Training like training's amazing, induction through the roof. Right, so, so that was dead interesting. So the idea behind this is, we'll go through that, but why mind maps in the first place? Now I'm dyslexic, right? So um, I didn't realize it was gonna become a superpower as I got older. Right, so at first, when I was like in LA Fitness and stuff, I didn't really want to get involved in training because I thought I'm going to look like a bit of a knob, right? So when I stand up and I can't spell, and, but then I quickly realized that if I'm teaching you how to spell, you're definitely in the wrong place, right? But if you want me to teach you how to run a leisure centre, because I've been involved in running about 200 odd or so, I can probably help you with that bit of it. So the idea about the way we think, we don't think like a spreadsheet, right? It doesn't go like this, it doesn't go like this. It starts in the middle and it comes out, okay? So it's very radiant to the way that we do it. And I quickly realized that I, when, the, when I got diagnosed with dyslexia, I was 40, right? I knew I had it, but no one else knew, right? So I got diagnosed and I, this woman was trying to explain coping mechanisms and I, I was already using most of them because I've, I've had it all my life and I had to get through uni, I had to get through college and all that type of stuff. So. The reality behind it is we think centrally and move out, so it makes sense to use these type of things. Now, obviously, we've got two parts to our brain. We've got a creative side and we've got a logic side. Now, again, if we want to light that creative, it's much better doing it from a central position and coming out. So it means that people end up becoming more involved and it's easier to understand and it's easier to explain why and how we use them. And we also can increase our memory capacity by 15% which is quite big, you know, in terms of what we can do. Now, at the end of this session, I'm going to do something which I'm going to apologise for now, right? So I'll tell you why I'm going to apologise later on, but I, I, I'm sorry, so, but you'll be fine with it. Okay, so product map, what's it for? Well, once I build these with organisations, what I quickly find, now, I'm not, by the way, this isn't me, I'm not going to build one for you, but I'm going to give you some of the tools. You're all going to get one of these. Okay, so these... Oh yeah, all over it, prepped, all it's over it like it. So the idea behind it is write on these, scribble on these, do whatever you like. But with a mind map, I'm fed up of going into organisations and I'll say to the receptionist, so what do you offer? Uh, gym and classes. Okay, J just them two things, yeah? Okay. Um, or like I'll go into like a public leisure centre and it's gym, swimming classes and it's like, okay. Or we just offer classes here. And it's like, oh, you offer a lot more than that. We've got to actually understand the product. Um, I'll give you an example. I went to one site the other week and I said, what type of yoga do you offer? And they said, yoga, yoga. And I went, eh, that's enough to piss people off. That's brilliant. In, term, in terms of not understanding your product, that's an absolute blinder. That's a belter, right? So then I started talking, is it, what were they trained in? Was it, was it Iyengar? Was it, do you know what I mean? Once you start breaking it down, it's like, well, it's really important to understand what your product is, but we never really train people in it. You know, if I asked you the question now, you've got five sites, what does the product training look like in your organisation? We'll leave it there, okay? But, but it's a thought, isn't it? It's, it, 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 it's, one of the, it's one of those questions where we think, do you know what? We always think we've got it, and it might be, I'll go and have a look at the website, but you offer so much more than what's on there because that's only the chunky or the good bits. So the idea behind it, these can be used for marketing. So I get fed up with organisations. Uh, new year, new you. Step into spring, summer beach body, 12 days of Christmas, piss off, right? If we actually look at exactly what we offer, we offer so much more. Yeah. It's like, it's amazing what we offer and we're still banging on about all that logical shit. 
right? So the point is, we know that emotional marketing works much more effectively, but we're still too scared to use it. Right, you know, like we're not, did, did you ever see that? There was an advert years ago, uh, when the aliens come, they're gonna eat the fat ones first. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Right, and it drove loads of people well, in to complain, so but then it, some of them ended up joining, yeah. right? So, yeah. but Summer Beachbody, where everyone looks like they've got an Adonis, and you walk in and go, where's them? Because <laughs> our customers don't look like them. So, it can be used for marketing, it can be used for business improvement, so once we break this down and start going into it, you know, are we looking at the whole business all the time, or are we just looking at pockets at certain times of the year? So for some reason, we only look at retention when it, when it gets to like March and April. Well, we should have been retaining them good from January, February, because that's when most of them have joined. So it, it's about making, McDonald's always used to focus on the whole business and concentrate on problems. So the whole idea behind it is that if you've only got a few problems, then you haven't got much to do. But you've always got to look at everything. If I look at something and it's okay, at least I know it's okay. Yeah. So what this is trying to do is that same focus where we look at the whole business as its whole entirety. Now, if I asked you this question, how, how did I know that mind maps were needed? But how good is your product knowledge? So on that little app, have a little vote for me and tell me how good you think your product knowledge is. Now it's anonymous, but there's obviously three of you or four of you, so. <laughs> I've got a rough idea who's pressing the button, yeah? So, but how good is your product knowledge about your brand? Okay, so we've got, we've got two votes. I'll take two, we'll go mad, we'll wait till two's done. Right, so, okay, so we're, we're, someone's amazing, brilliant, love that. So someone's absolutely shit off and knows everything, so that's brilliant. And, and someone's just very, very good, right? So I love that. So now I've got 10 questions to find out whether that's true. Okay, so let's have a very quick scan through. First one, how many different types of classes do you offer on your time? So not the number of classes, because that's easy. I want to know the variance of what you offer. Do you know exactly that? So again, do you know the types of, how many types of yoga do you do? Is it just one, is it three? How many types of spinning do you do? Is it one, is it two? So it starts to make us think a little tiny bit. And I'm assuming you'll both give me the same answer, which is amazing, yeah? Yeah, because you're both in the same company. It's got to be the same, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get that, but I'm on about the org. You're all big fellas, you know the score. So we've got that there, perfect. The next one, how many steps are there in your journey? If I said one, two, three, count it out, would you all say the same thing, right? So again, this is about the consistency of exactly what we know, and do we really know it? If I hear someone else talk about a member's journey. We, we haven't got a member's journey. I'm like, you've been open for 20 years. Of course you have. <laughs> it's just shite, and you're not controlling it. That's the difference, right? So how many steps are there in it? How many courses do you offer? You must offer loads. There must be weight management, there must be you know, stability, there must be mental well-being and health. Or we must be doing all the, we know the customer needs them because that fella on the, t on the news was telling us all the time, that witty fella, he kept saying that what we do is dead good. So you must have loads of courses and, and loads of opportunities. So he's amazing. What's this month's membership offer? Got easy, right? We, we'll have one every single month. So we must have one for this month, perfect. Why would you not want members this month? I get it, right? Um, next question, how many children do you have as members? This is the future memberships of your business. So we've got to be concentrating on them because it doesn't make sense. So I'm sh you can answer that. Yeah, 82, love all that. How many? <laughs> I'm only joking. But, but that's good, you know, perfect. Next one, next one. How often do you advise to change your gym program? Every six weeks. They okay. Get an email and a text okay, so they get a text mail and, 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 and that happens, yeah? So what percentage? Well, percentage is I'll come back, I'll come back, it's fine, right? Next one, uh, what change, when, when's your next change gonna happen to your aerobics timetable? Because obviously your job's to keep this as consistent as possible. As soon as we change a class, we change a habit and we change a behavior. And that behavior is really, really hard. So everything I, and you know if you change a class, it's like killing people's parents, right? So the reality behind it is, our job is to do everything we can to keep that as stable as possible. So I'm hoping it's not every month, but we'll, come on to it. The next one, when's the quietest time to get on your gym kit? Now, I haven't had a look on Google for your organization, but Google will tell me when it's quiet. I'm assuming you've got my Google My Business, right? You'd be mad to miss that because I love the way you're not quite sure, but that's fine. I love body language as well. So, but the whole idea behind it, on Google, it will tell you the quietest time. Is that the quietest time? Um, let's make sure it is, because then it's the right information, which is cool. Um, what percentage of members completed your member journey? Love this one, right? So if 100 people joined in January, what percentage of them hit their goal? That was a 12-week goal for them, so. Excellent. 
and they all hit the goal. And what did they get when they achieved the goal? T-shirt. They get their T-shirt that I completed my 12 week transformation plan T-shirt. Okay, so not a really, really good. And percentage-wise, getting through it. Uh, to guess. I can hear the guess coming. Can you hear that? So, yeah, it's I love the system in place, but it's not. Perfect. Not always live, and it's not always. So again, perfect, excellent. How many of you members hit their goal last month? It's got to be key, hasn't it? It's got to be key because 12 weeks is a long time to wait. Got a challenge this month for six weeks, a new challenge. Right? Okay, so now that I've asked you these, and imagine if I asked your staff these, now what I'm asking again is how well do you think you really know it? You know, just vote again for me, but how well do you think you really knew the answers to them? If I sat down with you both, would you have both told me the same thing? Because you're both in the same organisation, right? True. Now, I know there's different bits of it, but I get it. Okay, so if you voted, would you... Would it be the same as what you voted before? No. We'll find out now, ish, if another one presses. There we go, we've got our two. So, but, so, so, so what we've got is we've got a shift. That's brilliant. Now we know that there's room for manoeuvre, right? Excellent. So we know product mapping would probably work. Excellent. This is a base product map. Mine's dark because I'm dyslexic. Yours is light, so you can write on it and do whatever you like with it. Now, what Polly's going to do round about now now, for this, I'm happy to talk about any aspects that you want me to talk about. So if we just start off with membership offers, Paul, so if you can move that over to the side, click on membership offers, and let's have a scan of this. So, little move down. So you'll have a monthly offer, I'm assuming, like a pay-as-you-go type jobby, right? That, that's great for creating more traffic for your receptionist and blocking the reception up and making it harder to collect your money. But we normally have them anyway. Annual, we love them because we let them fall off a cliff because we haven't seen them. And we call, I call them lemmings because you need to have a separate journey for them. The, the, the same journey that you have for DD won't work. Um, pay as you go, yeah, yeah. Now click on benefits for me. So if I said to you, what's the benefit of joining your gym? What is it? Uh, 40 classes a week. I can't do 40. I get it, right? But it's, so when I walk in, will I see these? Yeah. Will I see a list of these are all the benefits and why you should join me? So if I came in twice a week, how much would I save versus an Is it 600? Is it 400 quid? Can I book earlier if I'm a member? So yeah, so I, I get early booking, brilliant, genius. Do I get discounts if I'm a member? Can I, what's the member journey worth? I'm assuming it's got a value to itself anyway. So we start building up all these different bits and pieces. What, what's my starter pack look like? So when I join, name anything you buy where you don't get instructions of how to use it. Quite hard. Right, if I buy a tin of soup, it'll tell me how to heat it, it'll tell me what to do with it. Buy a gym membership and I normally get nothing. All right, so if you click onto the starter pack for us, you can do it while it's open. No, the one bit further down in blue. There we go, perfect. So I'm assuming like a timetable, it's got the opening times, it's got all the different child classes. So this is about, this is how you get the best out of us. Right, so to me, just in terms of simple things in there, there's a low, like, do you do contracts? Okay, all the evidence proves to us that contracts make people stay longer because when they make that initial decision, right, what they're doing is they're actually making a life decision, not I'll just try it and see whether it works. So we know the retention is so much higher. I've done this with six different councils and every single time it's a no-brainer, right? Now, you can keep all the offers you've got on now, you just add an extra one on that will give you a better yield in terms of lifetime value. But I understand why people don't do it. Well, I don't, but they don't do it. So, but it's an option. Um, w now, which ones do you want me to talk about? I'll talk about absolutely any of them. So on that little sheet, are there any bits in there where you think, right, can we have a look at that one? Yeah, cool. It might be members journey, it might be personal training, it might be... Okay, so click on personal training for us, Paul. So personal training, again, it assumes this, whether you have external trainers, whether it's your gym instructors that do it, how are you going to take the payments off them? So just click on external for us, Paul, and that will open out. I wanted to make them dots smaller just to make it harder for you. So I'm assuming, do, do you have a deal where they pay you a certain amount and you get a certain amount? Is it? A certain amount of hours employed by us delivering the classes and that. Yeah, and they don't get paid for any of them. They, they never do PT in them. Yeah. Of Excellent. And, and do you know what? I, they, they get to know the client really well. So I, 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 I never like it when the sort of the, per, the person pays the club and then we split it to the PT because the PT ends up getting it either way because they're the ones who end up with the relationship, not us. So the key behind it, whether you use external or whether you use gym staff, absolutely fine. Now with your PTs, do you train them on how to run their business? We give them, we're like marketing and business support. We don't train them how to run it. 
So that's what becomes the biggest problem with PTs. They came in it because they love this. They love the hi. They, 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 they love them bits, don't they? And that's why they came into it. But very, very quickly, they realised, wait there, I've got all this admin. So making sure they have a business plan, making sure they have business support, and you must have an SLA that they manage each month. Okay, so again, the key being, and against their SLA, how did they get on last month? How many people did they induct for you? I'm assuming they mop up and they, you give them an opportunity to say, right, here's 10 people a month that I want you to induct and try and turn them into yours whenever you like, right? So with PTs, dead simple, but we've just got to make sure that these plans and these bits are built in. Now, if I go on to things like, go on to the, the lightest for us, please, Paul. Okay, so if I attended a workshop in your organization, what do I get? Like, I love the T-shirt, right? And isn't it mad how people fight for them T-shirts? Oh, I love T-shirts. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We used to do this one where if they came in 12 times in the first three months, they'd get a gold T-shirt. And if they came, if they averaged twice a week, they'd get a silver. And like people would literally be going, if I come in twice tomorrow, can I still have the gold? And it's like, <laughs> you've already created the habit, so yeah. yeah. Right, and the, the belief, if you use the TRP data, your average, if you get people to average uh, three times a week for the first 12 weeks, you're looking at around about 27 months stay versus around about nine. For the, take, for the two pound T-shirt, that's decent, yeah. But someone will come into finance and go, oh, those T-shirts cost a lot. <laughs> yeah, but the reality behind it is, is that it, it's about looking at the bigger picture than what we do. Now, when I have good attendance, so when I come in 100 times, what do I get on my 100th visit? Another T-shirt. I, I don't. But we, so it could be, if I come in 500, I'll still get nothing. So I'm now the same as somebody who comes in twice. Yeah, so therefore that's good. In terms of loyalty, when I've been there for five years, do I get a different coloured card? Do I get a di what do I get? How do you show loyalty? Our industry's shite at this. We're like yeah. Sky. Yeah, we, we had to do better offers for new people than we do existing. Yeah. And it and that's why we hate Sky. That's the bit that winds us apart from it works, right? But it winds us up, and then we go and do the same thing and show no loyalty. So it absolutely doesn't make sense that we don't do that. So who are your elite members? What do they look like? How do we, obviously we'll go down the testimony route and all that. Um, you get one of these maps for life. It's not just for Christmas, honest to God, I'm not even messing, you can keep that. I don't even want it back forever. Okay, measurements, this is key. You must take measurements. Now, if I want to go on any journey, because everyone bangs on about a journey, right? What, I need two things. To have any journey, I need two things. What are they? I need to know where I am and where I'm going. Right, so the first thing is we've got to test stuff. We've got to measure stuff and we've got to get them at the beginning. Now, most people don't really do this. All they do weight, which we know is probably going to come and bite us on the arse in some way, shape or form. Now, I'm not saying don't do weight because some people are prepared to pay eight pound a week to go and stand on scales with someone who lost two stone seven years ago. Right, they call it Weight Watchers and Slimming World, who used to be owned by Nestle and Heinz, by the way. What a genius machine that is, right? So. The reality behind it is body measurements. So do we take body measurements? Now, to me, there's four reasons why people join a gym that we can write programs and can interfere with. Weight loss, probably what, 70%? If we're real, even the ones who say they want to tone, but they don't really, they need to do something else first. So we've got weight loss. Then we've got tone, right? Bulk, beats body, look good, yeah, happy days. We've then got health and we've got sport specific. So they're the four reasons. So depending on what their goal is, surely that would change the measurements that you take. So if mine's sport specific, I'm assuming that you bought the really good treadmills and the really good bikes with all the heart rate tests on, so are we using them? Like, like we know the best way, we, we know the best way to train in terms of CV is heart rate training, right? It's, it's the only way that knows, it beats Borg's perceived scale of exertion, doesn't it? What a pile of poo that is, right? I hope Borg's not here. But Borg's perceived, perceived scale of exertion is two types of people. You get the one who goes, oh my God, I'm so tired. And you're thinking, you lazy bastard, right? And then you have the other one who's got snot flying. I'll go, I'm fine. <laughs> and you're like, no, you're not. Put a heart rate monitor and we've got it. And if we use Carvone and formula rather than the 220 minus your age thing, absolutely breaks it, right? So again, when it terms resting heart rate, how genius is this, right? So if I got you to, if I got you to lose 10 beats per minute, have any of you got a, cal have you got a calculator on there? Okay, so if I got you to lose 10 beats per minute, how powerful is that? It's ridiculous. So put in 10, times it by 60, times it by 24, right? Now times that by 365. 60 times 24, yeah, times 365, which gives us a year. Yeah, which gives us a year. And then times that by 10, 
and that will tell us how many beats we will save over the next 10 years. Now, the average person with a resting heart rate of 75 does 30 million beats a year, but you've just saved 52 million. But, but let's not do that, eh, because that's free. It takes 30 seconds to do that and times it by two. So it's an amazing measurement that no one uses. I went into a gym where they used to use string. So when you join, you get a piece of string and it gets put on the wall. And as you lose weight, you put another bit of tape on it. And as you walk in, you can see the string, you can see the, the movements. It's like, look, it's amazing, look what we've done. Our members have lost 900 inches this year. This year we're going for 1,000, who's up for it? Better than New Year, New Year, isn't it? Right, so when we actually start to use these measurements, it's massive. Now, I reckon I've also saved about 20 people's lives by taking blood pressure, but I'm only gonna do that for the people whose health is, is, goal is health. I'm not gonna do it for everyone, because it's a bit uncomfortable, isn't it? Do you know when you're like, you, you know you've gotta tell them you do it three times, because the first time they're always like, <gasps> and then once they do it again, it goes up. But, so in terms of measurements, what measurements do you take? I'm assuming for the people who want sport specific, you do a test. I, I'm assuming if it's, they want to bulk, we've got to measure them to see whether they got bigger. If it's weight loss, we could probably do bioimpedance and we could probably do measurements and maybe scales because I know the shape, but they love them. Yeah. So the reality behind it is once we start breaking this down. Now, this is another point. Let's have another look at your product. I walk into your gym. Now, imagine, imagine I'm a little bald fat fella from Liverpool who hasn't been doing any training since COVID's kicked in, right? Which is pretty good reality. Right, so I come into your place. I'm assuming that I can find information on those four goals because that's what I come in here to do. So what information can I find in your site to help me lose weight? It must be all around the place. It is? So how, how many leaflets would you have for weight loss? Yeah, not particularly weight loss. Yeah, but 12 weeks I'd imagine that. We'd have got a leaflet for that. Okay, so you, 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 yeah, but that's for everyone. It's not for my goal, is it? So, uh, okay, but, but can you get what I'm saying? There's probably more, there's probably so much more information we could give them. I, I must be able to get menus off you. Surely I can get menus off you. You must have been on the British Heart Foundation and got all the 500 menus that they've got for healthy eating. People snap your hand off for them, right? So what information do we actually give out? Have you ever read The Miracle Cure? Came out from the British Medical Society, February 2015, and no one knows about it. It's how we can fight off 27 different diseases. It's all the information you're ever gonna need for marketing. And we still say new year, new you. Yeah, summer beach body, 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> step into spring. They love step into spring, don't they? Step into spring, we've all. Yeah, Kushti. Okay, so um, do us a favor, go on to, let's have a look on here. What else have we got? Are there any other ones that you want me to go through? Cafe. Cafe, okay, amazing. Okay, so I'm hoping it's amazing anyway. So I'm assuming I can, you must have a pre-ordering scheme. So I can come in, take a sheet of paper and order that sandwich for seven o'clock after my class so I can take it home with me. Otherwise you're gonna have a queue and then I can't be asked queuing because I wanna go home. We know we've gotta get protein into them fast. So things like a takeout after classes, healthy food from eatwell.gov, amazing. Just an abundance of information. Now these people, they can't, they love a good protein drink as well, don't they? We all know it's shite. Let's not kid ourselves, right? We all know it's the crap and cheese that you didn't want. Yeah, it, 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 they, they found a way of selling the crap that they used to throw away and now we buy it and say it's amazing. All it does is make you fart and stink, but hey, it, it's all got a purpose. These people want to lose weight in the neck and them just kills me. But anyway, so, uh, do you know what? I haven't got them. Uh, I'll sh so there's a look, I went to a place through the week um, and they had this amazing menu. Basically what you do when you go in is first of all, you pick your protein. So they have fish, chicken, uh, halloumi, and something else. So there's four proteins. Then you pick your vitamin, okay? And then you pick your flavor. Now this means that they don't waste anything, but there's about 40, 50, 60 different combinations that you can get, which are relatively healthy. Oh, you'll also pick your carb as well. There's four things that you pick, right? Amazing. I, I walked into this site and everyone's walking around with these boxes and I was like, what are they? And I was quite lucky because the lad who did them, he now works for Cannons. He's like the head of food for Cannons. And it was him that put it together. So, but I, I don't get, most of these cafes sell flapjacks full of sugar. They sell chips, abundance of them. Um, I, I go back to my flashback days when I used to go swimming when I was a kid. And I couldn't wait to have a hot chocolate and a load of shite when I got out. And like, we're still doing it. Even though we know we've got an obesity problem, it's like, yeah, go ahead. Let's give them it again. 
oh, vending machine's getting battered, isn't it? We don't even get the money off that. We, we know what they're selling, but we let someone else have it. That sound, good idea. Um, so in terms of cafe, to me, it's about, is it, is it meeting the initial goals of what we're actually trying to do for them, or is it just a way of providing food? Um, like you say, can I, can I order my food? Order to go is absolutely key. Imagine I'm coming through a lunchtime class. If I can literally go, right, excellent, thank you, and I'm away, I might do it. If I've got to go and wait in a queue, I'm probably not going to bother. Smoothies, juice bars, all that type of stuff, it makes sense. It's very, very quick. It's, you don't waste much. You don't waste much. Most of the time, you use frozen fruit anyway, so you're not particularly wasting anything else. Anything else that you want me to go through? Free interactions. Ah, free, inter free interactions, okay. And that's on that side, there we go. Ping that one and then So this is like proper old school. Right? I don't know whether you have a super, super digital online thing that, they never met, that the members never asked for. I don't know whether you have one of them. Um, do you know like when technology come out and say, tell you you need this thing that no one's asked for and you go, all right, yeah, sound. So what this particularly does is if you're using paper, right? We used to, this is a little bit old school, but we used to have on your very first program, you'd have this colored card. Right? So if I've got 100 people in my gym or 50 people in my gym, these need more help than these do. Right? So dead simple. So the very first, first program that you write for them is this colour. Second program means at least they spoke to someone and they've moved a bit. And now they're probably into using different programmes. So three different colours, dead easy. Programme signed. So we haven't got enough staff, let's be honest. So we have two trays. One tray says, can you write me a new programme, please? The other tray it just tells you they've been in. Now I can look at that and go, oh, you're coming in too often, I need to change your programme, little note in. I can start doing little touches, because I haven't got enough staff to do it personally, but when they come in, it'll be like, ah, okay. So I can still communicate and I can still do stuff for them. Now this, to me, is the biggest mistake that everyone makes. So in terms of correction of kit, do you have this document in your gym? This is what people do wrong on each piece of kit, and this is why you would correct that problem. Mental. No, no, what, we'll have a list of how to use it properly. But I actually want to teach my staff what to look for. So when I see someone doing this on a bike, it's because the seat's too high and they're overextending a leg. Or they're like a deviance because the seat's too low, right? Or when I see someone on a rower and there's three phases to a row, but they push with the legs and then come back in as they're pulling. You'll notice because the stroke rate jumps up. So I'm going to teach them the things that I want them to look for, right? And then that document becomes 200 reasons to interact. The problem is, is no one teaches it. So I go up and teach you that not to pull the lapel down, down the back of your head, and someone goes, Steve showed me that. And I go, well, Steve's a knob, tell Steve not to do it. Because that machine is trying to replicate a pull-up. Yeah, do us a favor, do that pull-up behind your back. I can't, I know, <laughs> right? So the whole idea behind it, if we taught them actually how to, if we assumed that the MVQ they got in, in a week and a half at some stage, <laughs> not even on the same kit that you've got, we assume that that's okay, and that's going to be valid for the rest of their 18 years in the industry. We've got to teach them their way. McDonald's is, it's, I don't care where you are, where you've been before, this is how we do it. Okay, and it's about your way and your brand and your standard. So, to me, these are all just free. They're just simple things that we can easily drop in. Now, do us a favour, Paul, click in the middle. Now, I know you can't see this, right? But the reality behind it is, this is why our bleeding business is hard to run. Right? There's this many things all over the place. Right? And I get told you've got gym in classes. Right? And it, it bugs the life out of me because do you know what I've got? I can, expend, I can extend your life. I can make you be able to play Lego with your grandkids. All these different things that we can do, it's all built in there. But we never look at our business as a whole. We just, we pretend we, we, we find, oh, this is a problem. Well, you might have a load more problems. You might have a leaky boat, but this is the way of trying to find out whether we have or whether we haven't. Now, there's also a shitload of information in there. So, what I'm gonna do very, very quickly, what I'm gonna do now is like, there's a shed load of information. Now, we've only scratched on little bits of it, right? But in order to run your business, it's absolutely huge and there's so much information, it's unreal. Now, we always say when we're training staff, it's gonna be hard to remember all that, right? Now, I get that, but at least if we have it in one place, which you haven't at the minute, right? We have it in one place, and we can pull it all in and then we know whether, to me, I'd go through each section and go, are we doing that? Can that be better? Yeah. Are we doing that? No. Are we doing that? Yes, we're doing that. Happy with that? Happy with that? Not with this? It becomes, this is where it becomes business improvements and not just one particular part of it. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see what your memories are like. All right? So 
you may as well come into this little bit. It's, it's middle, absolutely fine. No, no, don't you worry about it. I'm all over this like a rash. You've come just in time. This is genius bit, I'm telling you. You get yourself in here, son. We're about to do something. So, what I'm gonna, oh, look at that, he's off. I would have had one of them. I'm gagging here, spitting feathers. So, I'm gonna try something on you, right? I'm gonna say some words in a mini, and I want you to remember them all in the, in the right order. That's all I want you to do. So, just put your pen down for now, right? So, are you ready? Are you focused on this? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So, you're all ready. Drill, soap, paint, lock, caravan, Rolls Royce, David Beckham, top hat, cigar, shorts, Madonna, bikini, newspaper, donuts, tort, eating, feather, parrot, flea. Easy, yeah? Yeah. Can you just write them down in the correct order for us? Yeah, I do. Give me other one more go. Yeah, of course you can. Just not yet. Just write them down in the correct order, no problem. Is it finished? Yeah. Excellent. How many did you get? Parrot, get in. This happens. So, let's have a little look. How many do you reckon you got? Four. What were they? That's even harder. Okay, we've got about four. Excellent. Drill, so good. Drill, so good, not in the right order, but definitely three. Congrats. I got drill, so paint, and then I ripped cigar, which was about 10 minutes later. Which, which is, so, but do you know what? So basically, memory tasks are really hard. So when I do like proper leadership courses with organizations, I normally teach this particular skill, where I teach people how to remember the correct stuff, right? Now, I'll do this, if I've got like five weeks on the run, I'll do it over those five weeks, or if I've got them for five days, I might do it over a certain period. How long do you reckon it would take me to get you lot to remember every single word in the correct order? If we were gonna do it? I reckon you'd do that with us in this first day. First day? Maybe first day, maybe not, because you've been punched a couple of times. First day, excellent, we're going to do it right now. So, we're going to do it right now. Now, Polly, what I want you to do is, can you time me, please? I want you to, now, can you hear me? Uh, I'm, I'm going to look like a little bit of a knob, but I'm willing to go for this as long as you are, yeah. right? So, what I'm going to do is, it's amazing that the strategy behind this is, is that, it's about, we've got, to, we've, got to, we've got to do repetition, yeah. right? So I've got to go through this at least three times. I didn't give you a chance before, this time I'm definitely gonna do it. I need to create stories. I heard one of you saying, if we can make this a story, absolutely. Now we're very visual people, right? So when I said, if I said to you, the Hulk, what are you thinking about? Green. Big green, you're not thinking about the Hulk written in black and white writing. Either the Hulk logo or the Hulk. We remember visuals, so I have to create visuals that are going to help you to remember this. So I'm going to stand on the chair. I will look like a knob, right? But I'll, I'll go for that. I'm all right with it. Right? All I want you lot to do is just come with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some actions, and I want you, to just, I want you just to come with me. Now, there's a little bit which is weird where I'm going to say, do me a favor, close your eyes. Right? So, Paul, you can come and do this as well. Get yourself over here, you pest. Right? So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. That bit's a bit weird but it's about visualization. I'm only gonna ask you to do that twice. So, what I'm gonna do is, can you set your, time, set your timer for me? Okay, so, tell me when you started it. Go, so we're gonna start off with a pneumatic drill. The pneumatic drill goes into a bar of soap, okay, and then some green paint flies out and it lands onto the lock of a caravan. Okay, the caravan is being towed by a silver Rolls Royce, driven by David Beckham. He's got a top hat on, smoking a cigar in his shorts. Now what's amazing, this is already on its way in. You don't even think it is. So we're gonna start off with a pneumatic drill. Excellent, that went into the bar of soap. Excellent, then the green paint flew out of it and landed onto the lock of the caravan. Excellent, towed by a silver Rolls Royce. Excellent, driven by David Beckham, who had a top hat, smoking a, in his, you lot of shit hot. Okay, just close your eyes for me, right? And I want you to think about this pneumatic drill. So keep your eyes closed, pneumatic drill goes into this bar of soap. The green paint flies out, lands onto the lock of the caravan. The caravan is towed by a silver Rolls Royce, driven by David Beckham, who had a top hat on, smoking a cigar in his shorts. 
Excellent. So we'll go through it dead quick. Starts off with a pneumatic. Twelve. Went into a ball of. Twelve. Then the green. Eight. Landed on the. Eight. Of the. Eight. That was towed by a. Roll driven by. Eight. Who had a top. Eight. Smoking it. Eight. In his. Eight. Oh my God, you're amazing. Okay. We look across and we see Madonna. She's got this blue sparkly bikini, right? She's sitting there. She's reading the paper, eating donuts. She drops one, so she gets a torch to find it. She doesn't find it, but she does find an earring. Now the earring goes from a feather that was from a parrot that had fleas. Yeah, dead easy. So we looked across and we saw Madonna. Okay, she had the blue sparkly bikini reading the newspaper, eating donuts. Excellent. She dropped one, so she got a. She didn't find it. What she did find was the earring that went with a. Feather from a uh, that had fleas. Oh my god, you're amazing. So close your eyes for me. In the passenger seat, we look across and we see Madonna. She's got this blue sparkly bikini. She's reading the newspaper, eating donuts. She drops a donut, so she gets a torch to have a look. She doesn't find it, but what she does find is an earring. The earring goes with a cap, that's a new one, that had a feather in it from a parrot that had fleas. Open your eyes. Excellent. So, we look across and we see she's got a blue sparkly, reading that, eating. She drops one so she gets a, doesn't find it but does find, that went with a cap, excellent, that had a feather from it, that had, excellent. Let's go from the beginning. Started off the pneumatic, went into a bar of, then the green, landed on the block of the, towed by a silver, Driven by, who had a top, smoking it, in his, okay, you're amazing. We looked across and we saw, she had a blue, reading, eating, dropped one, so she got it. That had, she couldn't find it, so she, but she did find, that went with her cap, that had it, from it. Excellent, stop your clock, and can you all write it down in the correct order for me, please? Okay, now, in the part of this, I will not give you the answer, but I'm happy to help you. So if you tell me where you get stuck, I'm more than, okay, where ah, did where did it land? Oh, got it. Yes, now you're back, in, you're back in the room. You're back in the room. Now, some of you said that you wouldn't be able to do this, which is amazing. Okay. Driven by. You don't even need me anymore, you're all over it like a rash. Does that mean I'm, um, Handicap here that I can't do. No, do you need a pen? Well, yeah, I do have the pen. I'm not Okay. What would you do with someone like me? You'd have to keep. Just, just, just tell me. The drill, the saw, the. Uh, it's green. Paint. Excellent, landed on that. Uh, what part of the caravan? Uh, the window. The lock. Excellent, of the. Excellent. Landed and it was being towed by us. Uh, those ones. Excellent, that was driven by. Who had a top? Smoking it. Cigarette. It wasn't a cigarette, but it was it. But it was it. Excellent. In his. Excellent. Who was with me? What did she have on? What was she reading? Okay. What was she eating? Excellent. But she dropped one. So she did get a torch. But she didn't. She did. But that went with a cap. They had a. From it. They had. She just done it. Okay. But well done for not being able to do it. How'd you get on? Yeah, that's crazy. Like how, how, how are you getting on? Tell me where you're stuck. Um, torch, earring. Yeah. Um, that, so the earring. Wait, yeah. Bev, Bev. Top hat. Ca Bev. Cap with a, with, a, with a palette that had excellence. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three. What was she reading? Uh, okay. So I, now I, Polly, Polly was missing one there, and I just said to her, "What was she reading?" And she went, "Ah." Now, now I didn't give her the answer, uh, right? And now this is key because when we train people properly, we know that we don't need to do that. We can give them the information that will help them to get there. So what's amazing is this: you all didn't. Some of you didn't think you were going to be able to do that. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Right? You definitely said you wouldn't. You've been punched too many times. Not sure, <laughs> right? Now the reality behind it is, is that. If I just ask these sort of simple questions, it's probably not going to work on there. It's not because we've done that thing on here. 
do us a favour, Paul. So we started the clock. How much training do you think that took? Ten minutes. Three minutes. Thirty-four, three minutes, 34 seconds to get all of you. Now, if I had a hundred people in the room, it would take me three minutes thirty seconds to get a hundred people to do that same task. It's never failed. Do you know why? Because humans are predictable. Yeah. The difference is if we train them properly, stuff sticks. Now, I said at the beginning, I need to apologise for something. Yeah. Try getting that shit out your head. Yeah. I'll see you tonight. I'll go like this. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's in. I'm telling you now, that's in. And I'll just go like that. Apparently that. Uh, apparently that. Who's that? And do you know what's even weirder? How's that a lock? <laughs> To the paint. I could have went like this. I could have, I could have created. Is I could, this a, a dance you've got But, tonight? oh, I'm all over it, right? But the reality behind it is, right, is that even some of the things I've used, I've just associated them and that's why they've stuck. Now, like I said, I could have made it even, I could have done this for the lock, yeah. right? But I, I did this, yeah. right? Now you've remembered it. Now, what's this? Shorts. When did that become freaking shorts? It's not like I'm a sign language expert and we're all pulling it back. So the reality is, is that, when it comes to sort of the things that we do, let's go right back to the beginning. We've, the mind maps, they help us be more creative, yeah. right? And it helps us to understand and picture and see things in a different way than we normally, we normally used to see in friggin' Excel. It's not designed for any human, right? It's designed by a computer for computers. So we know the mind maps make us more creative. We know by using them, our thought process will spiral out and we'll get much more information. We can then concentrate on the whole business, which bits are we gonna fix, which bits are we not gonna fix. And then we also know that we can remember this stuff. Imagine if we use that three minutes, 34 seconds to train stuff and we actually wanted to stick. Okay, it's well within us. Yeah. Hopefully you've enjoyed the little session that we've done. Thank you all four of you for coming. Great. A pleasure. Thank you very much. If they knew, I might have had two more in here. <laughs>